Hi, my name is Mike Swartz and Trimmer. I'm with All Ohio Equipment. I've got a Aladdin automatic parts washer loaded up for delivery, and I thought this might be a good time to go over some of the features and benefits of the machine. So those of you who are considering one can kind of get a little insight to uh, what the machines do and, and how they're built. First of all, automating your parts washing is going to do several things for you. Uh, number one, it's going to save you a lot of labor. That five, ten minutes at a time or half hour at a time that you're paying your technicians to stand there and clean parts, the machine now does it for you. Your technician throws the parts in the machine, turns the, not, the timer on, goes back to work on other billable hours. When he's ready for his parts, he can go back to the machine, pull them out, put them back on the vehicle or equipment that he's working on, and basically double up on his time. The nice thing is those parts are way cleaner and in less time than what you can clean by hand. The other the second benefit is we're using water to clean instead of solvent. So that eliminates uh, solvent service because solvent is a hazardous waste. You have to pay someone to have that hauled away. We're cleaning with hot water in this 170 to 190 degree range. Now if you're familiar with manual cleaning tanks that use hot water, uh, there's very limited uh, capacity there to get the parts real clean. The, part, the water can only be in that 110 to 120 degree range, uh, so you can feel, be safe to put your hands in that water, and uh, plus you're still standing there scrubbing by hand. So you have limited cleaning capabilities. Here we're cleaning at the 170 to 190 degree range with a um, aluminum safe detergent. It's non-hazardous, and it's just going to get your parts uh, very clean that way. Which brings up the third benefit, your mechanics aren't standing there soaking your hands in solvent for 10-20 you know, minutes at a time or, or whatever it is. The way the machine works, there is a tank of hot water. The smaller machines like this have 55 gallons. Our largest machines have over 200 gallons of water in them with that hot soapy liquid. The big pump that will pump the tank volume uh, more than once a minute through a spray manifold. Your parts will set in the middle of the machine on a turntable that turns about once a minute and you're spraying your parts 360 degrees with this hot soapy liquid. Uh, it does an amazing job. Some specific things to Aladdin that I really like. Uh, the machine is made from all 10 gauge steel and that's just a real super heavy rugged construction. The industry standard is usually 12 or 14 gauge steel. And uh, with 10 gauge steel, you just have better durability and longer uh, lifespan. As I said, the water temperature is going to be 170 to 190 degrees. It's pretty warm. Uh, they put a nice stainless steel heat shield on the front door just to protect your mechanics. One other thing on the outside of the machine is your turntable motor. We're driving the turntable from the top instead of the bottom. Traditionally, uh, the turntable motor will be on the back of the machine, just above water level, with a drive mechanism, like a chain running in through the water to a you know, sprocket on the bottom of the turntable. and Which brings up a couple of challenges, but the one is your drive mechanism has to run in through that hot water. The Aladdin just uses a fractional horsepower motor up on top of the machine with a drive belt to a drive shaft that runs through a sealed bearing to the inside of the machine. So we're not exchanging water if that uh, belt ever needed tightened or anything. It's all serviceable from the outside. You don't have to empty the machine to get down to uh, service that. Now to connect the uh, drive shaft to the turntable, the lad has this cradle to get that turntable to rotate. Uh, a cradle like this and a top drive turntable gives you a couple of additional advantages. One of them is your turn your turntable is centered and kept uh, in balance. Uh, because of, there's a bottom spindle that rests down in a socket on, on a steel ball. So the whole weight of your load is just resting on a st uh, single steel ball with a uh, single spindle. And it's kept centered at the top with this drive shaft. So with that balanced approach, you, the machine will carry a heavier load rate. rate. The, this smallest machine we have uh, has a thousand pound capacity. It's because of that balanced approach there. That brings up several additional loading options for you. Uh, if you invariably, you're going to always uh, run across a part that's maybe a little taller than the machine's capacity. Well, if it doesn't fit in here upright, you can lay it in here diagonally against these uprights. 
The other thing is you have a top crossbar for some loading options. Let's say you have a part that has all kinds of nooks and crannies, little blind spots that might require you to reload the machine several times and reposition that part. With those, I just like to hang something like that from this top crossbar. And as the water blasts out of the sides and the top uh, spray manifold, it's going to make that part move and sway every conceivable direction. And it's going to be getting clean from all those different directions. The other thing is if you've got a lightweight part that's going to fly around in there, you can either secure it to the side or to the top while it's rotating. Maybe you've got a big job, uh, you put your bigger parts down below, which brings up another benefit of this type of machine. You can clean more than one part at a time, as many as you can fit in there. So you've got your big parts down below. Maybe you have a handful of nuts or bolts or lightweight parts that you're, you're afraid of losing. Um, the machine comes standard with a large parts basket. But this little guy is pretty slick. It's an optional hanging parts basket with a lid. You can put real small items in here, hang it from the top crossbar uh, while you're cleaning something else below. It makes a, a nice loading option. Uh, there's another option uh, for parts loading, which is a parts tree, uh, depending on a lot of transmission shops that use those. Those are handy for anybody. Now, Aladdin has been building pressure washers for years, and they're very familiar with fan type nozzles that are used on pressure washers. Obviously, when we're cleaning with a pressure washer, we you know, stand back however far from what we're cleaning, but if we get to a real exceptionally dirty part, what do we do? Well, we get up close and personal with that wand where we can take that spray pattern that's out to here and get it narrowed down so that we have the full flow and full impact of that water onto whatever it is that we're cleaning. What Aladdin has done is, rather than using the fan-type nozzles, is to use a 360-degree manifold with holes drilled every inch and a half through that manifold to create a zero tip spray pattern. A uh, typical fan type nozzle, you know, from the distance of the side of the machine to the middle, is going to lose the majority of its cleaning impact, maybe 70%. A zero tip spray is going to maintain the majority of the cleaning the other thing too is when you have adjoining fan type nozzles, you got a part standing in the middle. If the nozzle pattern hits the other spray pattern before it hits the part, you've lost some cleaning power. If you get an, uh, one of those fan nozzles plugged, you're, now you're missing a big spot of uh, the part that you're trying to clean. So with the zero tip spray pattern, uh, you have an additional benefit too, is rather than have one spray bar up the side of the machine, you have spray bars on both sides and then halfway across the top and halfway across the bottom. The side holes are offset, so you get about a three quarter inch uh, pattern on every rotation, but your parts are going to be washed twice on each uh, rotation on the sides. When you clean parts with solvent, uh, eventually that solvent's dirty and you have to have it hauled away. But typically, we're not talking about actual dirt and grime. We're talking about oil build up to the point where it's saturated and it doesn't cut well anymore. Typical solvent tank might be around 15 to 20 uh, gallons of solvent. Well, here in one of our smaller machines, we have 55 gallons of water, so it's going to take a lot longer for that saturation to occur. But eventually, it's going to happen here as well. Now the nice thing is, as we all know, oil and water don't mix too well. So at night when your machine cools down, that oil is all going to float right to the top of the machine. So at some point when it's time to get rid of that oil, all you need to do is top the machine off with water, make sure it's, it's full, uh, go home for the night. When you come in in the morning, all your oil is floating on top of the water. There's a skimmer built inside the machine, which I'll show to you here in a little bit. You just put a drain container at the back of the machine, open up the spout, Hit a button for your skimmer, let it run for a half hour, an hour, whatever it takes to get rid of that oil, and you're back to having a nice solution again, ready to clean. Eventually, you'll notice the cleaning times maybe take just a little bit longer, and uh, it's really time just to change the solution altogether. There's a drain at the side of the machine. If you're in a jurisdiction that allows you to put that wastewater down the drain, we are using a non-hazardous soap. Um, you can open up the drain, drain the machine out, some jurisdictions don't allow this type of wash water down the drain. And at that point, uh, you're kind of stuck with paying a hauler to come in and take your wastewater away. Uh, that's the typical uh, solution. However, Aladdin gives you a third option. Uh, 
mounted to the bottom of the wash tank on the outside are a second set of heaters, dry element heaters. And um, after you skim the oil off in the morning and use the machine for the day, you can turn on those heaters. Uh, the, there's a two switch process for that. The first switch is going to disable the water pump and the immersion heaters for your wash water. So we don't burn any of those up. The second switch will activate the dry element heaters at the bottom of the machine. There's a vent at the top of the machine. You can uh, just run through the uh, wall with dryer vent. And there's a fan uh, for a power vent on that as well. And as those heaters come up to temperature, they're going to take your water on up to boiling temperature, turn it to steam, evacuate it out of the building. That's thermostatically controlled. So when your water is gone, the machine shuts off. When you come in in the morning, go ahead and scoop your sludge out like we said before. So that makes that uh, gives you a real nice third option. Whether that's the case now or down the road, you've got a backup plan for getting rid of your wasp uh, wastewater rather than paying a hauling service if it ever came to that. So to clean this machine out, up here at the top crossbar, you just have this bolt to take out. I've loosened it already. Turntable rotates around in front, just lift it out. Now, inside the machine, you have a front and a back panel to take out. The back screen just lifts out. The front panel comes out as well. And as you can see, you have full access into the bottom of the machine. Uh, you don't have a small uh, little cleaning hole to go through, or stick your arm down in to a blind spot. You have full access down into the bottom of the machine. It makes it real easy to do that. Now the skimmer consists of that steel wheel and the blade and your water level is going to be part way up on that skimmer wheel. Now as the oil floats on top of the water and we know that oil is made to adhere to uh, metal surfaces, that wheel is just going to turn real slowly whenever you turn that skimmer on. As the wheel comes around the scraper is going to uh, take the oil off, send it out the chute, out a uh, valve out the back where you have your drain container. It's a real efficient way of getting rid of the oil. You're going to get rid of about 99% of the oil in the machine. It'll be pretty well oil free after you run your skimmer. Well thanks again for taking the time to watch the video. We certainly appreciate it. Be glad to talk to you anytime about any questions that you have. Uh, stop out and visit your shop to see what kind of processes you're using and which machine would be the best for you. Uh, we'll be glad to talk to you anytime. Thanks a lot.